Albert, it's Brad Sussmat here in Phoenix. How are you? Good. What's up, man? I just saw your tweet during the break about the Cardinals want to keep Ray Horton and uh, thought, you know what, we need to get something going out here because Chip Kelly is just killing it today. Everybody's talking about Chip Kelly and the Cardinals are still interviewing away. Give us a little bit more insight into what you're hearing about this Cardinals job. Well, you know, it sounds it sounds like the the, the, the preference of the team is to keep Ray Horton and his staff um, there, and, and I think that's a little problematic for for some of the candidates where they look at it and say, okay, I gotta I gotta inherit a guy who has passed over for the job. You know, that's not saying necessarily he won't eventually be named the head coach. Cause I, you know, he, he may still be in the running, but it does sound like some of the candidates are are looking at this and saying to themselves. Do I really want to come into a situation where I'm going to be working with a guy who's been here and who was just passed over for the job? And you're already going to be working for a lot of people who've already been there. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what effect it's going to have on candidates. And hey, look, there are only 32 of these jobs, so I'm not saying it's going to kill their chance of getting anybody. But um, you know, I, I, what it sounds like is that there are some you know candidates out there that, that at least would would think twice about the idea of taking maybe their one shot at being a head coach in the NFL. Uh, you know, with someone else's people and with somebody who 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 had passed over for the job that they're about, that they're going to take. Albert Brewer with the NFL Network with us for a couple of minutes. Brad Sussmat, Cardinals head coaching job. They're continuing to look, try to figure it out. Jeffrey Lurie wanted this guy, Chip Kelly, from day one. I've not gotten a right. sense out here, Albert, from day one, who Michael Bidwell has wanted to have. Do you? Uh, well, you know, I, I think one thing that's clear is that they that they want an offensive minded guy. And, and they were, were looking for somebody that, that was younger that they could grow with. And, you know, you can see some of the names out there, Jay Gruden, Mike, Mike McCoy. Um, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see when it comes down to it because you know, now there are only two left, you know, and that's Jacksonville and that's Arizona. And Jacksonville's got ties to Gruden. They've interviewed him. Jacksonville has ties to Greg Roman because Dave Caldwell, of course, is very close at Roman. Um, so there's that too, you know, and, uh, uh, Jacksonville is seen as a, as a pretty healthy situation. So, um, you know, not that one job is better than the next. Um, you know, I think in both situations, you know, there's the priority of having to fix the quarterback position, and I don't think either either team right now is in a position where they're close to doing that. You know, they're going to have to get creative and, and, and do something to, to fix that spot. But, um, you know, there's no question that the, the, the pool is thin now, and, um, you know, I think both Jacksonville and Arizona are looking for – Similar traits to the guy. And, you know, at Jacksonville, you, you, you might have to give them a slight edge now because whoever goes in there um, could well be getting a clean slate and be able to go in and hire their own guys and set up their own program. And I've been pounding my fist out here for the last four or five days saying, why have they not brought Bruce Arians in here? You talk about younger, you know, Bruce Arians is older, but what a terrific job that he's done. Now they are going to be meeting with Bruce Arians. Tell me about Bruce Arians and, and what he would bring here to Arizona if he indeed were the guy. Well, you know, I mean, I've certainly been able to work with young quarterbacks. So if you were planning on drafting a guy in the first round, he would do that. You know, he'd be able to bring in a, you know, he'd be able to bring experience having worked with Andrew Luck and Ben Roethlisberger and, and, and Peyton Manning. So, you know, he's been in these situations where, where teams have invested heavily in the position and, uh, you know, and, and, and he's been able to help those teams develop young quarterbacks. The other thing, of course, he's got experience coaching at the wide receiver position and, you know, with a guy like Larry Fitzgerald there, um, you know, he's probably going to have a pretty good knowledge of how to use him and how to maximize him. So you're talking about maximizing your best player. I, I think the question with Arians really is, you know, this year was such a lightning in the bottle situation. You know, not to say, not to take anything away from him. He did a fantastic job. No question about, you know, how, how good he was in the situation that he was in. Um, you know, but I, I, I think if you're one of the primary questions you ask, if you're one of these teams is, um, can you take what happened in the last six, seven months, um, you know, and project that over five years or project it over 10 years? Mm-hmm. And is it going to work long term? And I think those are fair questions to ask because I, I, I think that's partly part of the reason, you know, and I, San Diego was never going in that direction because San Diego wanted, you know, and again, another one of these younger guys. But, you know, for Chicago, I think that was probably part of their thought process and um, going with Trestman over Arians. And, you know, I think it's certainly a question you have to ask. Lots. Arians has got a lot of accomplishments as a coach and all the rest of it, but you know whether or not he can lead a program long term certainly got to be a question, especially when you're talking about an older coach as well. Albert Brewer, NFL Network. Before we let you go, a couple other names. Daryl Bevel is interviewing here today. Is this a matter of any team that goes into the playoffs? You look at both their coordinators, like Gus Bradley was. Huh. 
so close, supposedly, to getting the job in Philadelphia when it never was the case. Daryl Bevel, what's your read on him here interviewing today in Arizona? Well, you know, I, I, I hate to keep, I sound like a broken record now, but it's the same thing. You know, it's a guy who's got, you know, uh, ability and he's got, you know, experience developing young quarterbacks and having worked with, um, you know, having worked with Russell Wilson now in Seattle, having gotten the most out of Brett Favre all those years, um, you having managed personalities too. You know, I, you know, you look at some of the guys that he had, you know, in Green Bay and, and the situation with Favre and, and then going to Minnesota and, you know, some of the names they had there, uh, you know, I mean, he, he's, he's shown it as a leader. He's shown it um, that he can be innovative. He's shown that he can adapt to the talent that's on hand. Um, you know, so I don't think there's any question that, uh, you know, Bevel's definitely got, you know, uh, Bevel's definitely got his high points. And the other thing, too, I, I think it's important to remember with Bevel, he's not one of these guys where we're just looking at the last five or six months. He's a guy who has a body of work, has been a head coaching candidate in the past, um, you know, and somebody who has four or five years where teams are really taking a hard look at him. And now, you know, it looks like he's finally to, the, to that boiling point where he's close and on the edge of, of getting one of these jobs. Um, you know, at this point, it looks like, you know, the chances could come down to those last two places, but certainly somebody who a lot of people in the NFL thinks ready. Yeah, you're hearing Todd Haley's out here. I mean, Todd Haley, we've heard all sorts of things about Todd Haley. Yeah, you know, I, I, what I tell you about Todd is that, um, you know, obviously, I, I think for Todd, going to Arizona will be different than going anywhere else because, uh, you know, Todd's reputation in, in Arizona is different than, than it is in any of the other 31 NFL teams. And, hmm. Um, you know, one thing that I think Todd gives you is Todd would walk into Arizona and he'd immediately have the ear of the best player on the team in Larry Fitzgerald. And I think that would help him, you know, be able to, to, to get control of the locker room and be able to, you know, really get the most out of the team. I, I, there are a lot of people in Arizona who like Haley. So um, I think he'd make a lot of sense for them. You know, I don't think if I were you guys, I wouldn't read too much into how many times he's interviewed or anything else. I think they know um, you know exactly what they'd be getting in Haley with, with Steve Kime still there and running the show and the Bidwell is still there. Um, you know, I, I think it'd be I, I think it'd be very interesting hire, and I think it's it's something that they should seriously consider. You know, I the way I look at the way I look at Haley is you come you, you bring a guy in, give him his second chance. You know, he's got a, he's got experience again. What you want in developing quarterbacks, and then he's got existing relationships in the building. Um, you know, I, I don't know if he'd be the perfect candidate anywhere, but unique to Arizona, um, there are reasons why he would make some sense there. Appreciate all your time on short notice. Thanks, Albert. You got it.